um, I'm very honored to be here to share to you about um, uh, positional OSA and also uh, our current pilot study on it and our protocol for the positional therapy. So uh, I'm sure that this situation is very familiar with all of you with uh, while the patient is slipping in the supine position, the patient has what we call the snoring. And uh, while the patient is sitting um, sideways in the lateral position, then the patient had uh, reduced in snoring and in between ways. So uh, this comes for the concept for uh, positional OSA. So uh, it actually describes a condition in a group of patients who had um, positional obstructive sleep apnea while the patient is in very different position. And uh, most notably, it is in the supine position. And positional therapy can be a viable option for treatment for this patient. So uh, it accounts for um, 53 to 77.4 percent of patients with OSA, and uh, in some Asian study have been shown that there are actually 67 to 75 percent of patients with OSA actually they have the positional component. So this is a very typical. Um, Epograph um, um, representation of a patient with a positional um, OSA. So as you can see, uh, when the patient is slipping in the supine position, there are more um, desaturation episodes. And uh, when the patient assumes a um, lateral position, like a left or right position, then previously uh, relief of the desaturation episode and relief of the subject structure. So um, firstly, I would like to talk about um, the definition for uh, positional OSA. So actually, this is a very tricky part because um, there are multiple definitions that exist in the literature and uh, there's no universal definition. So uh, this is a roadmap showing um, the history of development for the definition of positional OSA. So back in 1984, a group of authors, um, they classify traffic uh, syndrome based on three uh, uh, parameters, the patient uh, So um, they will classify the patient as having a OSA and uh, when the supine declines more than three times of the supine and size. And further on recent here in 2005, um, uh, a group of authors also tried to um, classify more on this uh, position OSA. So other than the three parameters uh, that was included in the previous uh, offer, uh, they also add the sleeping time for the patient. So other than um, the previous um, classification, the patient also has to have um, at least 15 minutes in each position. And the patient will be classified as a, depending on the non-supine HI, the patient will be classified as a supine predominant OSA the uh, um, non-supine HI is more than five, and supine isolated OSA if the non-supine HI is less than five. So uh, in 2015, um, a group of Dutch um, sleep specialists, they actually want to universalize the positional uh, OSA classification. So um, they published this uh, Amsterdam positional OSA classification. So uh, other than trying to uh, universalize the classification, they also aim to identify suitable candidates for uh, positional therapy in patients with positional OSA. So uh, uh, they consider the best sleeping position and also the worst sleeping position in a child. And the patient has to spend more than 10% of the total sleeping time in both the best uh, sleeping position and also in the worst sleeping position. It has been shown to uh, have a better sensitivity specificity, predict value, and also negative predict value when compared with the previous classification. So uh, in this classification, basically the patients are classified into three groups. So the APOC one, two, and three. So in the APOC one group, the, pet, the patient has a best sleeping position AHI of less than five. So uh, uh, it classified this group of patients as uh, the patient can be potentially cured with the positional therapy device. And the patient is in the APOC2 uh, group if the uh, uh, best sleeping position HR is in the lower OSA severity category. And the patient is uh, um, APOC3 when the overall HR was at least 40 and there's at least 25% lower best sleeping position. Right? So in APOC2 and 3, the patients 
uh, may benefit from a combination therapy or positional therapy and uh, with other therapeutic options such as contact. And potentially they can have the lower CPAP requirements and the patient can potentially have less uh, invasive surgery. So um, finally, um, it comes to introduction on positional therapy. So uh, positional therapy it is um, any technique that is used um, to avoid the worst living position, which is usually the um, supine position, which causes uh, the positional OSA. So uh, they're actually traditional and also newer generation types. So for the traditional type, uh, we'll come back to a bit of history. So uh, actually in 1984 in the Journal of Chest, uh, an author uh, described how she cured her um, operating pain with sewing a uh, pocket or, uh, into the patient's um, T-shirt and putting up the ball. So uh, this is the classic uh, tennis ball technique. So whenever the patient assumes a supine position, the tennis ball at the back will cause discomfort and so hopefully the patient will uh, try to assume a, a lateral position with the discomfort. So the efficacy had been proven in previous um, uh, over HI has been to drop uh, by a from five to five point nine, which is significant. Um, however, uh, as you can imagine, uh, uh, this traditional uh, therapeutic devices or methods uh, in general will have a poor uh, compliance because of the discomfort. So uh, at six months follow-up, uh, one of the study actually shown that the compliance was uh, actually only 38%. And another study also shown that after 30 months of use, less than 10%. So uh, now um, there are some newer generation positional therapy devices that have been um, described. Um, so uh, there are a few available in the market, uh, uh, stick position trainer, bus port, and also night shift. So the first two, they actually, uh, basically they put in a vibratory device in the chest or the sternum and wrapping it around the patient's uh, chest. So whenever the patient is uh, in the supine position, it will give some vibration. And for the uh, night shift device, it is the, um, it is a neck worn device and it is the only uh, new generation positional therapy device which has FDA approval. So uh, it weighs around 44 gram. Uh, it was worn at the back of the neck uh, with a strap and uh, it has an acoustic microphone to measure the patient's snoring and also has a uh, accelerometer to ascertain the patient's uh, neck position or the body position. So it will provide feedback to the patient in the vibration while the patient fine and it will start from uh, lower frequency to higher and uh, usually it starts 15 minutes after the turn on so to uh, allow the patient to fall asleep. So uh, now I would like to talk about um, some short-term results of our study, which is conducted in our unit. So um, our study is a prospective uh, cohort clinical study. We make use of the night shift positional trainer device. Uh, our study was launched in August this year, uh, partly because previously, uh, because of the COVID, uh, our PSG service has been suspended for a bit of time. So um, the objective for um, our study is to try to determine the effectiveness of positional therapy uh, device in patients with positional OSA and uh, determine its effective effects on the quality of life of patients and also the compliance. So uh, we recruited patients from uh, our sleep clinic in our unit, uh, Primera Hospital and also in Dongwon Hospital. Uh, patient has to fit in with a uh, diagnosis of OSA and they have to have uh, greater 10% of the total sleeping time in the best sleeping position and also in the worst sleeping position. And they uh, should be able to uh, uh, fulfill the APOC 1, 2 and 3 classification for the positional OSA. Uh, patients are excluded if they are um, pediatric patient and uh, if they are simple snorer and uh, also uh, for patients who have undergone surgical treatment uh, or undergone any major hand neck surgical procedure which may affect the results. So um, uh, this shows um, the, uh, the uh, results generated by the device. So the upper diagram shows the baseline uh, without vibration while the lower diagram shows that one month result of the device. So as you can see in the middle part of the um, uh, upper chart, so uh, the gray zone actually represents uh, the supine position of the patient. So, um, so baseline, the patient is sitting um, around 78 
uh, percent of the time spent at the night uh, in the supine position. And while the lower part, uh, as you can see, the, the basically the gray zone only happens in, at the start of the sleep. And the red um, lines actually represent when the device is uh, having vibration. So uh, whenever the patient has a supine position, it will vibrate and then the patient will change to a lateral position. So this patient actually shows very successful results. As you can see in the blue shades, it's actually uh, when the patient is having uh, a lateral position. So, so the percentage of uh, the point sleeping time from baseline is 78.1%, that's dropped to 0.9% uh, of the time at one month period. So um, <clears throat> we uh, recruit patients in our clinic and we will perform a one month follow up. So during the follow up, we will uh, review the patient uh, compliance on the device, any discomfort, and we'll also give um, some questionnaire to the patient to measure the quality of life. And also we'll um, take in the data from the device. And at three months and six months, we'll also perform PSP. Uh, we will return the device from the patient at nine months and at one year, we'll perform a PSG without the device. So uh, we review that uh, to see whether the patient is actually uh, has uh, changed in the sleep behavior, changed to a more lateral position without the device. So uh, we have recruited a total of uh, 14 patients. Um, the average age is 48.5 uh, and uh, eight males and six female patients. Uh, the BMI average was 53. Uh, overall HI was 21.14. Uh, most of the patients are in the mild and also moderate category. Only two of them are in the severe. And for the supine HI, the average was 31.1. And non-supine HI uh, was three. These are the baseline data. And percentage of supine time was 36.5%. And uh, we recruited 40 patients. However, um, four of the patients, they dropped out from our study because of um, various reasons. And we'll explain that um, afterwards. So uh, we would like to present our results in um, three aspects. Um, firstly, in the uh, respiratory measure and also quality of life and also compliance. So for uh, respiratory measure for the um, AHI, uh, the baseline was 21.14 um, for the baseline uh, data. And at three months, uh, it was 8.2. And the drop was quite significant. The p-value was uh, 0 0.012. And as for the um, percentage of supine time, um, the baseline was 36.5%. Uh, and uh, at one month, it was 1.5%. Uh, and three months, it was 5.2%. As you can see, uh, there's a drastically um, decrease in the percentage of supine time uh, in our patient um, at one month and also at three months. And for the time uh, snoring more than 50 uh, decibel, uh, also dropped um, from baseline 23% to one month around 5% and three months 0.6%. Um, and uh, other result that we'd like to present includes quality of life. So uh, we'll let our patient uh, to do um, some questionnaire while they follow up. So um, first questionnaire is the Epworth Sleepness Scale and another is the Pittsburgh uh, Sleep Quality Index. So um, the actually the um, score from these um, questionnaires are, um, didn't differ quite significantly uh, after the study show, it shows that um, the patient had a similar quality of sleep and also uh, the sleep efficiency for the patients. And as for the bed partner, we also perform a questionnaire for them and uh, shows that the Pittsburgh uh, quality, sleep quality index was um, actually didn't differ uh, significantly. And only one of the uh, bed partner reported being awakened by the device and seven of them uh, felt that um, there's decrease in snoring sound of the night and seven of them found the device to be useful and also satisfactory. So uh, finally on the data and compliance. Um, so for the percentage of night use uh, at one month, it is 77% uh, and at three months it was 97%. Uh, and for the um, uh, percent of night use, uh, more than four hours of usage. At one month, it was 60%, and three months, it was uh, 73%. So the compliance was um, around um, uh, on, on par with uh, the figures found in the literature. So out of the patients who had um, dropped out from our study, uh, four patients had um, dropped out, and uh, one dropped out uh, three days into the study, and three dropped out at one month. 
And uh, most of them compl uh, complain of some neck and shoulder discomfort. Uh, two said that there's too much vibration and one um, complained there's uh, neck and also shoulder pain. And also there are one patient complaining about non-refreshing sleep uh, after the device. So uh, this is the first study of positional therapy in our local population. And we'd like to uh, observe uh, the tolerance after long-term use um, at around nine to uh, one year. And uh, if the sleep behavior can be changed uh, without the device and whether if, uh, it can be a combination therapeutic option, one of the combination therapeutic option for patients with OSA. And uh, further improvements, um, so uh, based on our experience of our current patients, if, uh, if because currently the uh, intensity of the vibration cannot be adjustable, so in future, if the device can have the intensity of vibration, which can be adjustable, uh, so potentially can decrease the discomfort in some of the patient and they will start to tolerate, and uh, also if there is some side sleeping pillow to ease the patient's neck and shoulder discomfort. And uh, for our experience in selection of patients for positional therapy, uh, in the current study, we choose uh, mostly APOC1 patients, so they have chance of cure, so they will have better incentive to use the device and better to have no previous history of neck and shoulder pain uh, to choose for uh, the patient. And a very supportive bed partner is also important. So finally, I would love to conclude um, significantly. Uh, there are uh, progress in positional therapy made over years with newer device. Uh, so this is the first local study, uh, although only from some short-term data, um, they are quite promising and also patients show uh, good compliance and it didn't negatively influence um, patient sleep efficiency and uh, expected to gain uh, momentum in the scope of OSA treatment uh, with uh, proper uh, patient selection. Yeah, so uh, finally, I would also like to thank uh, Dr. Jung for his support for my study and also uh, the nursing staff of Dongwu Hospital Sleep Clinic for uh, their support. So thank you very much.